Hey everybody, what's up? We are back with another edition of the Crew Cast. I'm Jason Sukamel, joined by Cole Patterson as always. Uh, let's get some housekeeping out of the way first. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you guys are enjoying the content, I hope you are, and we'll have a lot to talk about in this one. So be sure to like these videos, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel here, and as always, get you some of that prime shrimp. You see it above, primeshrimp.com, 20 bucks off your first order. Uh, with that promo code orangebloods. Try it. You'll love it. I promise you. And I'm, I'll put my hand on the Bible if I had one. I haven't talked to anybody who hasn't uh, loved yeah. their prime shrimp or even my parents who are uh, <laughs> there you go. Really finicky. Yeah, they've bought some prime shrimp and they bought went back and bought more. They like yeah, it so much. Yeah, easy to cook, easy to clean up. Cole, dude, it's been a, I tell you, man, it's been a crazy week. We'll talk about recruiting, but um, it's just been one of these weeks where I've been kind of playing from behind all week. We got I got a family of six for people watching who don't know my wife and I have four kids and four out of the six knock on wood. I'm one of the only ones who hasn't had the flu this week, four out of the six. My wife had it, three of our kids, the other, my one daughter who didn't get it. She's the one who has a job, but no car. So I got to take her there. She plays lacrosse. So I've had to take her to lacrosse. And <laughs> I got to take her to a football game tomorrow. And then she has lacrosse tournaments Saturday morning and Sunday morning. It's like, I kind of, this sounds awful, but I'm like, I wouldn't have minded if she might have been one of the ones who got sick. I spent more time in my car driving her around than, than I do driving myself around. But yeah. anyways, dude, it's been a crazy recruiting week, crazy week in my household. It's, it's I'll admit, it's been pretty tough to keep up. Um, but we got a lot to talk about, man. And I want to start um, this morning or start Monday morning, rather. You, we wake up, you and I are sitting at the computers and we're working, we're chatting or whatever. And Jamel Johnson news breaks the, the defensive back. He decommits from Texas. I didn't see it coming partly because Jamel never talks to us unless you had see, saw, seen him in person, um, which maybe should have been a bit of a sign, but um, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I guess I was moderately surprised, but not just flabbergasted. He had told us early on that he might take other visits, things of that nature. So um, didn't expect it to happen on a Monday morning. Wasn't expect that's not ex how I expected my week to start. But your thoughts, Cole, on Jamel Johnson opening up his recruitment? Yeah, for sure. Like you said, he's always kind of been a little open about taking visits. You know, he he camped at Florida over the summer, got an offer there, and you know, uh, I talked to him. At, I think last time I saw him in person actually was back in August at the uh, the True Buzz Media Day. You know, with Anthony Hill and all those. Uh, all those guys. And he seemed pretty locked in at that time. You know, he said he was talking with Arch and John Tick Hook and uh, Derek Williams, all of them. Uh, he seemed pretty happy, but you know, that was a few months ago and things happened in recruiting. And yeah, you know, like it wasn't, I don't know if I, it was the biggest shock in the world just because he's always said he wants to visit and he's gotten some offers, but yeah, I wasn't expecting it to happen either. So um, kind of a miffle way to start the week. That's for sure. Yeah. And you know, it's, he's never been one like, he doesn't respond to text messages and calls, which is not terribly uncommon, but yeah. you know, you've got guys like John T. Cook and Connor Stroh and Jaden Chapman that are showing up to Austin for pretty much every home game. And a lot of the class yeah. is I mean, Peyton Kirkland. We'll talk about him. He's coming in again, the offensive lineman from Florida. Um, you know, uh, he just hasn't been as involved and as connected. It feels like Jamel Johnson wasn't as some of these yeah. other guys. So, you know, I'm not saying that, he wasn't part of the class, obviously, and part of that group. I'm sure he was on the text chain and everything else, but just didn't seem to be as bought in maybe as some of the other guys. So not the biggest surprise in the world. So that happens Monday morning. I don't remember, 930 or something, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we start hearing rumblings Monday morning that Colton Vosick might flip from Oklahoma to Texas. Maybe that day, maybe on Monday, right? And I was able to connect with a source mm -hmm. close to Colton in, in Thankfully, this was amazing. He was awesome. He's like, nah, it's going to be Tuesday. Uh, I'm not sure when yet exactly, but sometime on Tuesday it's going down. So we were able to get our ducks in a row there and something I should have done a long time ago. I was I meant to write a Colton Bussett commitment story because we had kind of seen yeah. this one coming, right, for a while, probably coming. But thankfully, Cole, you were yeah. around. I was like, dude, I am swamped. Can you – that was in the heat of <laughs> – Yeah, a lot going on. Yeah, which I'm still dealing with, by the way. I still got kids at home today. I think they're just – maybe faking it at this point to skip school. But um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so Cole was uh, thankfully there to write the commitment story and get one ready and have it in the can. And Ketcher wrote his instant analysis. And I said this, we did a video. He ended up, Colton Vosick ends up flipping his commitment. He announces at four o'clock on Tuesday. Well, he tweeted 
Tuesday late morning, like 4 p.m. And man, I mean, 4 p.m. on the dot, he tweets that he's flipped his commitment to Texas. And I was like, yeah. You know, we did a 25 minute video on Colton Vosick and what he means. But I said, you know, my biggest thing that I liked about this is like he gave us a time and he was on time. Right. So oh, man. You didn't waste yeah, a second. No, man. You know, as media guys, you and I love that because sometimes yeah. we literally like, all right, we know something's going down today, but the kid's not saying when it's happening. We can't even leave our computers, much less leave the house. You know, we got to like be with him. Yeah. You know, or if it's like, him. Or if it's like a ceremony, it's supposed to start at four. He doesn't actually make the announcement until like five. So yes, exactly. sitting down for an hour. <laughs> Colton was like four o'clock. And man, I mean, it was four o'clock on the dot. He posted yeah. his tweet. We're like, boom, we posted all the stories that we'd already written and uh, uh, we're able to kind of somewhat turn the page. But um, yeah. just a tremendous pickup for Texas. I mean, not, listen, Rivals 100 player. He's going to move up the rankings, I think, on the next update is what you know. Nick Harris joined us on yeah. Tuesday and talked about you're getting a guy that committed to Oklahoma. So you're kicking one of your allies, uh, you know, in the gut there, yeah. um, you know, huge need position, just a tremendous day for Texas to flip Colton Vosick. Um, How big of a deal should, is that, you know, Colin, how excited should Texas fans be? I mean, you got to definitely be really excited for everything you mentioned. Um, seemed like he was, you know, I think the day before he committed to Oklahoma, we saw him with Arch and hanging with Arch and everything. So it was kind of, a little surprising that he committed to Oklahoma that next day, but, but Texas never really let up. So it's pretty big to keep a legacy, you know, at home. You know, he's at Westlake, and they're doing pretty good at Westlake. They just got Ethan Burke. They're obviously getting him. So kind of getting that pipeline going and everything like that is big. And, you know, he's a guy that, is, you know, even if he wasn't a Texas legacy, like I say, he's a top 100 player. He's really, really good. He took over that state championship game against Jackson Arnold, who's going to Oklahoma, and got a really good guy or team. I still remember him in. Ethan Burke, like living in that backfield. So, you know, like you said, Nick said he's going to be moving up, and it's easy to see why he fills the position of need. So, I think I think Texas fans be really happy about this, especially because he, like you said, he flipped it from Oklahoma as well. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a two for one deal. Yeah, and you know it's funny, and, and I need to backtrack because the other big news on Monday was Anthony Hill decommitting yeah. from Texas. Again. And I said this on one thing after another. Yeah, dude, I was like, hey. <laughs> Getting Colton Vosick is huge for Texas, right? Yeah. Potentially getting Anthony Hill is huge for Texas. But isn't it more fun for Texas fans when he actually, like, Colton Vosick flips from Oklahoma to Texas? Yeah, imagine, yeah. imagine in July, you know, he's like, oh, I'm just going to go to Texas. You know, my dad went there. I live in Austin. Yeah, you'd still be excited about it if you're a Texas fan. He's a tremendous yeah. player. Like, the fact that he committed to Oklahoma and took the path he did, yeah. <laughs> he has a steal away from Oklahoma, maybe Boy, still a steal away from from a uh, AM, right? Isn't that even a little more fun for yeah. the Texas fans? I would think so. So um, let's talk about Anthony Hill and we'll get into, we'll kind of segue, we'll get come circle back around to this weekend. It's a huge recruiting weekend for Texas, but Anthony Hill will be one of them, of course. Monday morning, I had hit up Anthony's uh, dad actually on Sunday, I think. And I said, hey, man, we're not even out of the weekend yet, but I said, I've got people peppering me with questions. Is there any chance y'all are going to be at the TCU game? And I kind of thought he would be because Anthony and his dad have, all, have been saying for a couple of months, they've been telling Orange Bloods, hey, there's a chance I might visit. And the TCU game always made sense. It's a night game, um, Saturday night, so you can get there, blah, blah, blah. Um, and his dad responded Monday morning and said, yes, we'll be there. So I put that on Orange Bloods. That was huge news. Yeah. Anthony yeah. Hill will be at the game. Huge news, right? And lo and behold, what two hours later he formally decommits. I didn't know that part was coming. Yeah. <laughs> to the game. So and I had even tweeted Cole. I, I I posted on Twitter. I said, whatever, big development, five star linebacker Anthony Hill visiting Texas this weekend for the TCU game. Still committed to Texas AM, but yeah. Texas coaches remain making him a priority. And then an hour later he decommits. I'm like, okay, <laughs> not so true to Texas <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get Twitter blue to edit that tweet. <laughs> yes, I need to go back and edit that, back at that point an hour later. But um, just a tremendous development for Texas. I mean, it's funny. You start your week with a decommitment, and I think probably it's safe to say that was a mutual agreement with Texas and Jamel Johnson. But then you get Colton Vosick. Then, the, or well, not then. Then you get the Anthony Hill decommitment thing. Then you get Colton Vosick. Then you got all these other guys coming in that we'll talk about. I mean, just what a weirdly monumental recruiting week this could yeah. shape up to be for Texas. One that we really didn't, I mean, I didn't wake up thinking this was going to be a crazy week other than knowing they would have some good players on campus. I didn't think it was going to be this 
kind of week. So, Cole, just kind of take us through what you your thoughts on Anthony Hill. Yeah, I've gotten to see him a couple times this season. And, you know, it's obviously why he's a five-star linebacker, why Texas really wants him. You know, Sark and PK were at one of his games or earlier this year. So you can tell they never really let up after the after he committed AM. and They kept chipping away, pushing the right buttons. And, and it looks like it's working out in their favor. You no, know, no. If he's gonna commit on Saturday, for instance, but it seems like they're definitely in the driver's seat for it to get him, and he's a difference maker, kind of like Colin Vosick at defense end. Anthony Hill fills a position of need, um, and Texas has done a really good job of selling him how he fits in the defense. And um, even off the field, Anthony Hill is a great kid. You know, really good head on his shoulders, a guy you really want in your program. So um, credit to Texas for not letting up. You know, uh, it seemed like when. AM got Anthony Hill, then they got DJ Hicks not too long, too much longer after that. It seems like they kind of had the top two guys in the state locked down on defense, but Texas never really let up on Anthony Hill, and it looks like it's going to pay off in a big way. Yeah, now DJ Hicks is going to Oregon this weekend, so AM yeah. is just unraveling. Um, yeah. I love everything about Anthony Hill, man. I love his play on the field. He's a neat position. His dad is just an awesome guy. Like, I, mm -hmm. I don't mind sharing this. When he committed to Texas AM, I sent Anthony just a private note, congratulations. And I even sent his dad one. I said, hey, man, congratulations. And I just said, I wanted to know, I really respect the way you all handled yourselves through this process. There's just no nonsense. They don't play the games. And, you know, if he's going to be somewhere, they'll tell you if you ask. And, uh, yeah, you know, you want to keep some secrecy. But um, just, yeah, like you said, you're a really good kid, Anthony, when you talk to him. He's very respectful. Just short and to the point sometimes. But, I mean, it's just no BS. You don't have to filter through a lot of BS with him, which is – Kind of what I would expect from a linebacker, and I just I really like yeah. his personality. But you know, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think Texas looks good there, right? It was down to Texas and Texas A and M before he picked A and M. He's coming in this weekend. I'm sure Texas will try to close that door this weekend, but yeah. I don't think Anthony wants to commit that quickly. Now, might he get caught up in the excitement and the atmosphere? You know, anything's possible. We'll see. But you have you know schools like LSU and Alabama, and um, you know other big time national programs are going to be in the mix here trying to, to make a late surge. So I don't think it's a slam dunk. Like people think it is a lot of Texas fans think it's a slam dunk for Texas. I got my future cast pick in on Texas. Okay. Yeah. So I do think it'll be Texas, but I don't think it's a guarantee. Like maybe some Texas fans think it is. There's still work to be done there this, this weekend. Uh, getting him on campus will be huge. Um, Cole, I want to transition from, that, and like I said, we'll, we'll come back and talk about this weekend a little bit more. But you had a big weekend last weekend. We talked about it, I remember, late last week, Thursday. We wanted to do another crew cast uh, earlier in the week, but my week kind of went all haywire. But I want you to talk about it. you were down in Florida. You had some really good visits down there. Uh, just kind of take take the wheel and kind of talk about your trip down to Florida last weekend. Yeah, I went down to Orlando last weekend and got to see Cedric Baxter and Peyton Kirkland. Um, you know, I was – Baxter was expected to return from injury um, on Friday, but I got a call late on Thursday that that wasn't going to happen. So I kind of had to flip all my plans around. Uh, but I was able to still make it work to where I was able to see Cedric Baxter um, early in the afternoon before I seen Peyton Kirkman play that night. So it all worked out pretty well. And, um, you know, Cedric's a really good dude. Uh, like Anthony, Anthony Hill has a really good head on his shoulder. Same thing can be said for Cedric Baxter, really humble kid. Um, talk to me for a, for really a long time, you know, just uh, probably an hour, maybe even longer than that, just kind of opening up to me, giving me a lot of good stuff and kind of just tell me who he is and his background, everything like that. It's, it was really interesting to hear, you know, his story and everything like that. Um, but, yeah, the thing that Texas fans want to hear about is his commitment. You know, he said he uh, was really locked in, and, you know, obviously a commit's probably going to say that. You know, he's taking two recent visits to Florida State, but, you know, he really expressed how much trust and, you know, really love he has for Tashar Choice. Uh, Tashar Choice has kind of been his guy since really he was committed to Florida State early in his high school career. And Choice was at Georgia Tech, and he said they hit it off back then, and that's really only grown over the years. He's talked to B. John Robinson and Jameer Gibbs about playing for Tashar Choice, and both said that they wish they could play for him even longer than they already have, um, which he really took note of. Um, he really liked Sarkeesian and how they use running backs. He mentioned – you know, with B. John and Roshan Johnson going to the NFL, that will kind of leave the door open for him. Sark's already mentioned that they want him to get on campus ready to roll. You know, he's expected, or he will be early enrolling, um, enrolling early, excuse me. And, 
know, he's kind of ready to make an impact from day one. He said he must play as a true freshman. That seems like the plan that Texas has as well. So he's really excited for that. He uh, actually, before I even got to talk to, talking to him, I guess right before I got there, he said he was talking to Jonte Cook. He said him and Jonte have a really, really strong friendship, him and Arch Manning as well. He mentioned to me how cool it would be to line up in the backfield with a Manning. So he's kind of already has that circled as well. But, yeah, really good kid. Um, he did say that, you know, Florida, Miami, you know, Florida State, some of the in-state schools are – in contact they're kind of talking to him wanting to visit stuff like that he's not sure if his playoff schedule will even allow him to do that even if he wanted to he um, said that right now he's just focused on winning a state championship but he is planning to get back to texas in december so it really just depends on when the state championship game falls so if it doesn't conflict with that he wants to be in texas on i think it was december 17th so that'll be obviously be really big for texas but yeah he wants to sign early early enroll. Um, he seems pretty locked in with Texas. They've done a really good job of kind of locking the, locking that down, kind of smoothing things out after that visit. I know Texas fans and Orange Bloods just freaking out after that Florida State official visit, especially if not even just the first unofficial visit. But, you know, he I don't think there's too much concern there. You know, obviously you got to pay close attention to a pen and a paper. But I think Texas is in a good spot, you know, to hold on to that, to the, to that commitment and get his signature. Um, you know, high impact player out of Florida. Who uh, you mentioned, Colin Vosick probably moving up. I think Cedric Baxter. You know, he's missed a couple of games, but he, he had a really good season before that. I think he's due for a big rise as well. Um, so big time player there. And then I got to see Payne Kirkland that night. You know, he's been committed to Texas this summer. That commitment kind of came out of, came out of left field um, during the summer. It seemed like he didn't he didn't include Texas in his top group. Then he committed to Texas, or he paid. Uh, his own way for that unofficial visit in July and you know we got to see him there he'll be he'll, he was at the Iowa State game he'll be there this weekend so nothing to worry about at all there um, he's actually doing some recruiting you know he's pretty active on social media as well and um, one guy he's already in in the ear of is Deontre Robinson a 2024 top 100 defensive lineman he's trying to get him to come with him to the TCU game so we'll see if all of that works out or not um but regardless, DeAndre Robinson had good things to say about Texas as well. You know, Bo Davis, everything like that. So, all in all, it's pretty eventful weekend. We'll have some more stuff on Orange Bloods and the War Room and everything like that. Yeah, the CJ Baxter stuff. If you're Texas, you got to feel really good mm -hmm. uh, about that report. And if he comes back in December, I don't even if he doesn't come back in December because you said they got a really good team. They'll make a deep playoff yeah. run. If he doesn't come back, I still think he signs with Texas. If he does mm -hmm. come back. I don't think there's anything to be worried about yeah. at all. So, mm -hmm. um, but a tremendous player, like you said. I mean, I don't want to say he could start for Texas as a freshman, but you know, I don't know that he's a game one starter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think he'll play. And I mean, would it be a complete shock if you know four or five weeks in the season he was a starter? No, I don't think so. Not listen. I love Jonathan Brooks. Uh, Jaden Blue is really good. Uh, Keelan Robinson should be back next year, so they'll have some running back talent. But I mean, mm -hmm. Baxter is really, really good, and he'll find. He'll find a role, I think, early on. So, um, all right, Cole, we got a big, big visit this weekend. I mean, I can go through a whole list of guys. Uh, it would take us probably a long time, but um, yeah. let's let's go through some of the, the kind of the top heavy, if you will, um, names on this list that we've confirmed. We mentioned Anthony Hill. Okay, that's kind of the headliner, if you will. Um, JV and Toviano, not far behind, right? The five star. Yeah. Back. We, kind of, we kind of buried the lead there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here we are, what, 15 minutes in? We're just now bringing up Toviano visiting. Uh, you know, he was at LSU last weekend. It's yeah. funny, that was the second trip to LSU in, I don't know, the last month, month and a half. Um, mm -hmm. You saw a lot of people put, like, future casts and crystal ball picks in for LSU, which I get it. I, I said, hey, I probably would do the same thing if I was having mm -hmm. to pick. I don't know, man, JV is such a wild card. And it was so funny. I was writing my Q&A. It was Monday night. I, was, I think I was at my daughter's lacrosse practice. In fact, I'm, so I'm writing my Q&A, and there was a question about Toviano. And yeah. it said, I don't know, is it dead or something like that for Texas? <clears throat> and yeah. I said, well, I said, and I wrote it Monday night. I said, well, I said, you know, him going to LSU again, you know, that looks like a pretty strong indicator for LSU. But I said, Toviano is such a wild card, and he doesn't communicate much. I said, it wouldn't shock me if he winds up making it to Austin this yeah. weekend. Well, lo and behold, I think sure it was late, he tweets, yeah. 
next morning out of he tweets, I'll be in Austin. So, yeah. And I hadn't even run my story. I didn't run my story till Tuesday night. So I had to be, basically <laughs> that and several others. I had to go in and like totally rewrite this damn Q&A, you man. You say so, that whole across practice. <laughs> yes, everything, between Monday and Tuesday night, everything changed in, on a lot of fronts. So, um, so, but Toviano's coming in. I thought, I still think probably LSU just because he's made multiple visits there, but Texas had no chance without getting him to campus. He's coming yeah. in this weekend for a big, big recruiting visit. I don't know if you know him much more than I do, Cole, because Javian doesn't talk a whole lot. But I mean, how how big of a deal is that for Texas to get him on campus Saturday? It's obviously not a small deal. Like he said, just getting him on campus is a pretty big win. Um, I remember talking to him earlier this season that he wanted to make it out to Austin at, at least once, if not multiple times. And getting him on campus for this kind of game, um, you know, Blake, uh, before we started recording, you mentioned how big of a game in the Big 12 this is, you know, meaningful game in November in the conference. So for him to be in the stadium, you know, in that atmosphere, you know, you got college game day in town, you all the other recruits, um, you know, Anthony Hill, obviously, um, all the commits as well, going to be around him. It's going to be pretty big to get him on campus around everybody. You know, he's been in Austin quite a few times in the past. So just getting him back in, uh, reminding him why, why Texas was near the top of his list. Um, it's pretty big, pretty important. You know, obviously, a five-star DB, one of the top uncommitted players in the country. So, obviously, I think LSU probably has the lead right now. You know, he's been there a couple of times. He even stormed the field. I don't know if you saw that video. He stormed the field after no, they beat Alabama. Yeah. yeah, that was a great game you got to watch last week. So. Yeah. So, Texas has some ground to make up there, you would think. Like I said, he doesn't talk too much. He doesn't really tip his hand. He's kind of reading the tea leaves. LSU probably has the lead right now, but – Getting him on campus and around the coaches, around the players, commits, anything can happen, especially with the momentum you mentioned with Foster committing, Anthony Hill seemingly on the verge of maybe getting in that class uh, soon enough as well. Kind of, you mentioned Anthony Hill maybe committing this weekend if he gets caught up in the environment and all of that, you know. If Tobiano is around that as well, it's hard to, hard to see him not favoring Texas or at least moving Texas up his list as well. So pretty important to just get him back on campus for a big game. It's not, not even just, you know, an 11 a.m. game. No offense against like Iowa State or something. It's a night game against a, the number four team in the college football playoff. You know, Texas has a chance to make the Big 12 championship to kind of control their own destiny there. So, you know, pretty big all around. Yeah, I don't know if Texas will overtake LSU, but they you got to figure they'll at least close the gap and give them something to think about. At least move up the list, you would think. Yeah, you know, and um, you know, Javian's not going to say much afterwards. Um, may have to send you by a school or something, Cole, to see. Even in person, he's a smart kid that he's not going to tip his hand. No, yeah. he'll give you very respectful answers, but he's not going to yeah, give you anything. Really. I can read between the lines there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Delaney McDonald from Waco Connolly will be. It was going to be an official visit. Now it's an unofficial visit. He told me he's going to take his official visit to Texas. Yeah. Uh, it's in December. I think it's the 12th or something. He's already got it lined up. But um, former Oklahoma State commitment, just Texas offers him. He visits. Then he reopens his recruitment, decommits from Oklahoma State. That's usually a pretty good indicator right there. He's coming back in for his second UT unofficial visit. Um, TCU did just offer him. He did tell me that he wants to visit TCU I'll say this. Jelani told me on Monday he's not planning on committing this weekend. He wants to wait, take his official visits, Texas, TCU, maybe somebody else if some others come into the picture. But he wants to take those two visits and then make a decision in December. We'll see. I think there's some people in Austin that think maybe this thing wraps up a little quicker than that. And numbers are getting tight, man. I mean, you know, yeah. when he's in this weekend, Texas could be like, hey, you know, we've got a couple guys who are about to pull, you know, pull the plug on their recruitment and commit to us, pull the plug. That sounds bad, but pull the trigger on their recruitment and commit to us. I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> you may need to speed that process up. If this is where you want to be, let's not, yeah. let's not wait around until mid December. So um, we'll be watching that one closely. Uh, Jaden Greathouse, the recent Notre Dame commitment uh, mm -hmm. from Westlake, you know, he'll be in. I think he's probably pretty solid to Notre Dame based on everything Jaden's always said to me. But you know what? He's coming in late. Uh, Texas still needs another receiver. You got the Colton Vosick commitment, his teammates there. So, I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe something crazy yeah. will happen. Another big one here, Bravian Rogers, who is committed to Texas A&M. Um, he was, what, he 
committed to AM, decommitted and recommitted to AM, right? Yeah, yeah. Cause he, then, yeah, cause he did out of nowhere and then decommitted and then recommitted and then Alex Hughes uh, yeah. in the mix and now he's yeah. going to be in Austin. So, uh, you know, tremendous athlete, guy that can play pretty much anywhere on defense for, for, for you. So we'll see if Texas can make a push there. I'm interested in Derek Hunter. I need to double confirm with him the Juco defensive tackle. Told me a week and a half ago or so that he was coming in. I'm trying to still confirm if he's coming back in. It's an unofficial visit, and then he wanted to come back for an official visit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Texas is still looking at some things at defensive tackle. They got Sadir Mitchell committed, but they're still trying to bring in at least one other one. I think there's some mm -hmm. things there worth watching, Cole. So, uh, Derek Hunter, the Juco defensive lineman. I know I'm blowing through these pretty quickly, but uh, and then they got official visits. They got wide receiver DeAndre Moore from California, uh, wide receiver Jacoby Lane from Arizona, who's committed to USC. He's coming in. Yeah. Deuce Robinson, the number one yeah. tight end from Arizona, will be there. Marcus Deal, uh, big defense alignment from Naaman Forrest, who was coming in. Then he didn't think he was going to be able to because he thought he'd have a playoff game. His playoff game is now on Friday, so he mm -hmm. is coming in. For an official visit this weekend, that's just a bunch of names I threw at you, Cole. But anything that kind of stands out on on these uh, official visitors, or maybe some of those unofficial visitors. Yeah, for sure. Um, quite a few. You know, Johnny McDonald. He's a really good athlete, a really good basketball player. And you know, uh, Oklahoma State. If you if they offer and evaluate you, evaluate you early, I feel like that's pretty pretty good sign. You know, Texas and TCU both jumped in the mix. There seems like Texas has the lead. Um, getting DeAndre Moore on campus is pretty big as well. You know, you know, there's a sign or there's a, I guess back, there's a feeling back in the spring, you know, he was kind of towards the top of the receiver board. Maybe Texas could get a commitment, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then, you know, he went to Louisville, things kind of cooled off there. Uh, he just was at Georgia for their win over Tennessee. So just getting him back on campus, you know, him and Arch have a pretty good relationship there. So, you know, being around all the commits uh, at Texas, you know, big game of atmosphere, environment, and everything like that could be pretty big. You know, Deuce Robinson, I know we touched on that a couple well, – a month or two ago. I guess the Alabama game, uh, how how odd that situation was. His parents made it in or something like that. And yeah, he couldn't so, Yeah, it's a game or whatever. So, good to finally get him on campus as well for that official visit. Um, and then – yeah, I mean, it seems like they're really hitting that West Coast pretty hard. You mentioned Deuce Robinson, DeAndre Moore, Jacoby Lane, all of that. So we'll see if anything comes out of that. And Marcus Deal is a guy that I think we both really like. You know, he's a guy that can play either side of the ball really on in college, uh, offensive line or defensive line. Really big dude. He's always told me Texas towards the top of his list. You know, Bo Davis has done a great job there. Um, so big to get him in for that official visit. You know, at one point he was considering Oklahoma. You mentioned maybe he was going to push it to December, you know, after his football season. So pretty big sign that he's coming in this weekend for, you know, TCU is also one of his big contenders as well. So if Texas could win there, maybe they'll, you know, play something in his, or mean something to him in his mind. So we'll see what happens there. But, you know, huge list of visitors. And that doesn't even really mention any of the 2024 guys, you know. Like yeah, Colin Simmons coming in. Uh, Colin Simmons will be in. Hampton, yeah. Freddie Jones, Michael Uni, Terry Bill yeah. Bussey. Corey Gibson, Daniel Cruz will be there. I'm looking at our list. And then there's a ton of Texas commitments. I mean, most of the in-state guys are coming in. Peyton Kirkland, we talked about. Spencer Shannon's coming in. Yeah. Leona LaFowle, the linebacker from Hawaii, is flying in for yeah. unofficial visit. So it's going to be a jam-packed uh, – yeah, like uh, We thought the Alabama weekend was big, and it was. But this weekend, might, when it's all said and done, might be a lot bigger, you know, when you consider yeah. who's all going to be in town and – potential commits, flips, all that kind of stuff. So really big for Steve, Steve Sarkeesian and the staff to, you know, secure all these visits. Yeah. So uh, we got a lot to talk about and a lot to cover coming out of the weekend. We'll have coverage obviously on Sunday, probably throughout next week. There's so much to talk about and so much to cover. So we'll have a lot, a lot of calls to make and a lot of people. To see. So, yeah, exactly, man. So um, with that, Cole, I think uh, we've covered most everything I wanted to cover. Um, we will, uh, like I said, we'll keep, keep tabs on this uh, big action-packed weekend and have updates throughout the weekend and probably into next week. So uh, that's this has been the Crewcast. I'm Jason Sukumel. That's Cole Patterson. Thank you, everybody, for giving us some of your time this week. Stay on Orange Buds. Uh, stay connected to orangebloods.com. Keep an eye on it. We'll have, like I said, big updates 
uh, throughout a big, big recruiting weekend. Do us a favor, like this video, like this video. It helps us subscribe to the channel. That helps us get you some prime shrimp, yeah. primeshrimp.com. Do that. You'll love it. Uh, Orangebloods or Orange is the promo code there for 20 bucks off your first order. Cole, I feel like we squeezed a lot into this 30-minute uh, crew cast, my man, but uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate Blake Skaggs behind the scenes uh, producing these videos. Everybody have a great week and a great weekend, and we will be back uh, when – uh, events warrant it. Cole, maybe who knows? Maybe early next week we may have a lot to talk about. We may For have sure. to try to knock one out early next week if if I can get my kids out of my hair and get them healthy <laughs> and everything else. So, but, uh, everybody have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. We appreciate you giving us some of your time. Take